that's that's ultimately what I what I chase is that reaction when I give somebody something that I made and then they go, well, what do you mean you made it? And that's you know so that's kind of how I got started and then from there it was just turtles all the way down. I mean I just I made myself a wallet then I made I, I, somebody saw it at work and then somebody said, well can you make me one? And I go yeah, yeah I'll make you one and gave them one and they go hey man look at this look what Omar made and then it's like you made that can you make me one? And I'm Omar with Texas Tea Leather, and I'm a Tandy guy. Uh, leather itself, I got started with, uh, it was Father's Day, and uh, I was looking for, for something really special to get for my dad. It was, uh, I wanted to get him a, a custom-made belt um, with some, uh, you know, with his name, some engravements. Uh, my father races uh, horses, so I wanted to get him something with some horses on it and something, uh, just custom for him. And I started calling around and getting some prices and things like that, and. Um, just not having the means to, to pay somebody at the time kind of forced me to uh, kind of just Google it, look up Tandy and, and pick up a kit uh, and, a, and a belt blank and kind of do it myself. And that's pretty much where it started. It, uh, it, was, it started with that. It started with the work to do that. And then ultimately his reaction when I gave it to him, um, and I, I, was, I was hooked. And when he got it, <laughs> I remember it, just my dad's a pretty serious guy. He doesn't really show up a lot of emotion. And uh, when I gave it to him, he was just kind of holding it, and he, he just kind of paused for a second. He's like, and the first question he asked me was, "You made this? Like, how, how did you make this? Like, you, what do you mean you made this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I, I made it. Like, I, I bought the tools and I, I had a blank belt and I stamped it out and I made it." And he's like, and he was just <laughs> his reaction was so funny because he, he was just blown away by it. And he's like. But, but but this horse, like, how did you do this? Like, how did you do the, my, my name here? And like, and I just remember, I thought to myself, like, well, if I can get that kind of reaction out of him, that, that, that he doesn't really react to too much, I thought, well, this is kind of cool. Yeah. So just, it just kind of evolved into just making wallets for people. And then the requests came in for like, uh, well, can you put a eagle on it? Can you put a, can you put my name on it? Can you put my, you know, sports team or whatever the case may be? And, uh, and that's just kind of how I ended up getting into just leather working in general and then you know sh slowly things started folding over into well what else can you do and I'm like well, I don't know what, tell me what you want and they tell me what they want and then I figure out how to what tools I needed to buy to make it and then sure enough you know Tandy has them and so I go buy whatever tools I need and make whatever they needed and then it just kind of evolved into into all this madness uh, <laughs> that, that just ended up in the corner of my little man cave here and that's, that's pretty much where I'm at today, is with, with all these tools and, and, uh, and the means to just make things for people. Challenging, uh, it's, it's always, especially when you make things uh, like that, where for me it just started off as something uh, very novel. I just, I made something for somebody and then the question is, well, well how much do I owe you? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, it's, I, 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 I'm not a professional. I, I don't do this, you know, for a living. How do I put what I what you owe me I, I you know so for the first I don't know maybe two dozen wallets I ended up just giving them away uh, they would tell me well how, how much you want for this and I was like well I'm not it was $15 in materials I mean you give me whatever you want to give me I, I had I had fun doing it I, you know it was a it was a, a you know therapy escape for me for a few hours I got to get out of the the madness of just being home and, and, and I got to go to my own little cave for a little while and, and make something so um, you know, so that was one of the one of the challenges there, and then and then also the the, the ever looming challenge for me is, um, especially when somebody puts trust in me to, to 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 create something that they want for somebody special, is the challenge of not disappointing that person that put that trust in me to make something special for somebody special, um, and then always chasing that that same reaction that I got from my dad the first time I made him a wallet was, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, as long as I can get that out of somebody, I think. All my other challenges are just, they all just kind of go away, but that's ultimately the, the biggest one that I always, I don't know, it's kind of self-imposed, I guess, but it's just always wanting to make sure that that, uh, that the person that I give this this item to um, really likes it and, and, and the person that they're giving it to is it ends up being something that they keep for you know quite some time. I like to think that the quality is going to be there whenever they need it to be, and if they get to keep it for a lot longer than they would have. $15 wallet that you buy at Walmart, then that's great. You know, that's kind of what I'm going for. So that's one of the biggest challenges is just making sure that that quality is always there and making sure that, that they like it. That's the biggest thing.
it's easy to get lost in it. it. It ends up, I don't know, it just ends up being, especially when you can make something like that, it just ends up being something you get lost in. You're just like, at the end of it, you walk and be like, whoa, even sometimes myself, um, there'll be some projects that are like super challenging. And uh, if, <laughs> if you look at my Instagram page, um, there's been a couple of times where I, I got to a point to where I've, I've done all the leather work and then I, I mess up on the, on the dyeing process. That's like one of the last things that you do. And uh, I'll mess it up and I'll get so upset. And then I'll just go, okay, screw it, sorry, this is not going out. And to further stop myself from trying to justify it, all the time that I put in it, I'll, I'll, take, uh, I'll take this rotary cutter to it and I'll just slice it up into a bunch of little strips. And then I'll go, I'll take a picture of it and then just dump it in the trash. And then I'll go, okay, now I got no choice but to start all over again. So, uh, yeah, it ends up, it ends up being, uh, uh, pretty frustrating towards the end, but it's, it's fun. You get into it, you know, it's just, yeah, that's, uh, the ever ending perfectionist, right? It's just like figuring out at what point do you stop doing, uh, stop nitpicking. Um, I think a lot of it just becomes, for me, I, I kind of gravitated towards wallets just cause it was more functional. It's something that you have on you every day. And, um, uh, you know, whenever I, I, I think I've, I've, I've had maybe two or three wallets that I, I did like what I just told you, like I just chop them up. Um, and it's mainly just a design. Uh, I'm not happy with maybe a couple of cuts on the wallet that I did or a couple of the stampings. Maybe I, I accidentally hit the stamp too hard and it, and it bounced over and, 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 you know, and it hit where it wasn't supposed to hit or something like that. And the rest of the project can go just silky smooth and I'll just go, I'll go back to that one little little nick on the corner that I'm just like, God, I, like, uh, you know. But then as I, as I, I think about, okay, is it, is it ruining the form? Is it ruining the function? Can the, can the wallet still function as a wallet? And uh, as long as I can get that and as long as I'm happy with, with, uh, with it going out and, and me giving it to somebody and saying, here's, here's the wallet that you asked for, here's the wallet that, well, now that you paid for, right? I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. As long as I can do that, I'm okay. Um, but the process leading up to that point, I think sometimes, sometimes I do get caught up in that where I'm just kind of like obsessing, obsessing, obsessing. And then it's like, ah, oh, that doesn't look good. And sometimes I'll take them down to my wife and I'll go, well, what do you think? And see if she finds that little blemish. Cause if she can find it, I know somebody's going to see it. And so that's kind of, I use kind of her as my barometer to decide whether or not I'm, I'm done with the project. So, uh, it's, it can get tough sometimes cause you can, you can fall into that. You know, like, oh, just constantly obsessing over what, what you have on it. And are they going to see that? Are they going to see this little nick that I missed or this little, you know, stitch hole that's a little to the left instead of to the right? But it just, you know, uh, ultimately it's a handmade piece. Um, and I've actually had people tell me, well, you know, as I give it to them, I go, it's got a little blemish right there. And they're like, what blemish, dude? This is handmade. Like, it, you know, if it was a machine that made it, it wouldn't have a blemish, then it wouldn't have no soul. I wouldn't care about it. But you made this with your hands, so this little stitch that's a little to the left when it should have been to the right, it's it's cool. I like it. It's it's fine. So any anybody that's that's trying to get into this, it, it's um, f first of all, it's really easy uh, to get into it, um, and it's really easy to get lost in it too. Uh, a lot of times. Especially if it's something that you just kind of want to tinker with and things like that. Um, I started off with, uh, like I said, one of those small kits, and then, you know, th three years later, here I am with, with all these, <laughs> with all these tools and stuff. Um, and, and you can get as crazy with it as you want, but to start off, it's so simple. Um, and 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 once again, there's uh, you know things like YouTube and things like that. There's so many things that that's that's where I learned a lot of what I learned. Um, you know. Tandy has that great library of YouTube videos that you can go on and, well, how do I sew something together? Okay, well then they'll take you step by step on how to sew something together. They'll tell you what parts to buy and what tools you need. And it's, it's, it's really easy to get started. Um, and it's also, uh, once you get started and, and you actually make that thing that you sought out to make, a checkbook cover, uh, uh, the bookmark, or whatever the case may be, it's really easy to go, hmm, that was pretty easy. Uh, let me see, I wonder, I wonder if I can make a wallet. Okay, yeah, let's go try to make a wallet. And then you make that and you're like, okay, that was pretty easy. Well, let's try a, a, a purse now. You know, and it's, it, you know, it just kind of turtles all the way down. You can, you can really get, you can really get into it um, because it's so easy. It's, it's so, uh, it's so easy to get started uh, with, with, with all the resources that are out there now, especially. Everything's all digital now. Everything's online. You type in YouTube and I mean, you can learn how to build a car on YouTube. It's pretty simple.
I'm Omar with uh, Texas Tea Leather. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram at uh, Texas Tea Leather, uh, Facebook at Texas Tea Leather, and uh, website is up now at www.texastealeather.com.